Hi guys, hello Mary meet everybody, it's Michelle Marie Tony, and of course it is the 2nd of January of 2019, it's Wednesday, and this is Super Futures Open today, obviously. I'm using the other camera right now to shoot this video, because it has more room in memory to store longer video. Duh, I would have an answer. I had an excellent dream last night. I mean, excellent dream last night. To understand this excellent dream, you have to know something about what makes a good dream for me. Here's a hint. Here's a story. Um, the dream was completely unexpected, and I'm talking a chip cooker. Oh, thanks. Okay, I got something to chomp on. I told you I have friends here. Mini chocolate cookies. I'll eat them later so I will get crumbs all over the place. Anyway, so I wanted to tell you this story. I was going to tell it to you today, but I, before I forget it, I wanted to try to get in the main gist of it. Um, me, our Lemon H3 Zero, and Cringe Report went to a bank. We had to do some banking. Now, we obviously... Leave it to the technical aspects of it. In fact, we were completely geographically different places aside. It doesn't even matter in the story. Anyway, we go to this bank. It was actually originally a converted church. Okay? And the first thing is we went in and we went up the stairs and then all of a sudden there was this door. And I was like, oh, Wait a minute, this is this is administrative level. There's no doorknob, there's no there's no bell, there's nothing. And then our living says, hey, I saw an elevator button um one set of steps below us. So he goes down, he presses the button, and all of a sudden we hear something that sounds like an elevator moving, and then when all of a sudden we hear a click and then the door opens and what we discovered was it was actually like a flying floor or not a flying floor but a like it was an elevator floor it was hydraulically driven so obviously when we went across to the other side of the the elevator of course there's the other door which is open so we went into that door and we took care of the administrative things at the at the administration office. And as I was sitting there, I was looking at the phones, and I noticed they were they were crystal. They were actually made out of glass, or something similar to glass or crystal. And they were like um, an old-style office phone, um, but it was all clear. I mean, it was totally awesome. <laughs> And I knew it wasn't a dream because I could pick the phone up, and it was very heavy. Very heavy. And cold, because obviously it's glass. It's not going to stay warm like, say, plastic would. So I knew it wasn't plastic. The handset may have been plastic, but the base certainly was not. And I said to one of the receptionists that we were working, I said, why didn't you guys ever switch out the phones to something more modern? She says... Did you replace these beautiful things with something modern? I said, no, I keep them. That's why we kept them. Or from when the, this used to be a church. This used to be the, the administration office for the for the um, the pastor. Okay, parish office. So we got our business dealt with, and then we had to figure out how to get out, obviously to go home. Our 11... And Cringe Report took one way. Me and Lumi, yes, she was with me, took the other way. Because, you know, Lumi and me are actually were on one body. But we, we always know that. So, I went, I found this huge honking elevator. I mean, this thing was gloriously beautiful every way possible. It didn't look too stupendously unusual in the sense it was an elevator, right? It was an automatic elevator, you get in, you push the button, and you go to the floor you want to go. But it was some of the floor names that were, numbers that were really weird. 
okay, like you think it was a three floor building, okay, but there was floors for L, G, one, and two, but then there was a, a H, an I, a J, and of course the L button. So I wasn't sure which button I was supposed to press. And I had to pee real bad. So, <laughs> so I went ahead and I said, well, G sounds good. That means ground level. I pressed the G. Actually, I didn't see the G. I saw the L for lower level, the lobby. And that's how I thought it was for the lobby. Because it was on the other control pad where the numbers were. Uh-uh. It got me something similar to loading dock. And it was pretty, it was pretty foul smelling down there too. I don't know why, but I wasn't going to sit there and argue. I wanted to get the heck out. So I said, well, what about these other buttons that have letters? So I pressed, I said, I'm going desperate. And I thought I was going to wet myself. Fortunately, I didn't, but there's a reason why that didn't happen. Anyway, so I, so I pressed the J button. The next thing you know it, I didn't know that Fame had actually had jumped into the elevator. He was actually in the elevator with me. It was an open frame elevator. So Fame was clinging onto the guardrail with his claws, and he was like, whoa, we're going for a trip now. So I said, Fame, what are you doing here? He looked at me like, um, I'm going for the ride, dude. And he actually spoke it. I said, what? What are you, you're going, how could you talk? He said, I could always talk. Okay, listen, Michelle, you're going for a trip. I said, as we said, as we shot out of the building proper and we're going in the sky higher and higher and higher and faster and faster and faster and faster. I said, how is this possible? He said, he blinked his eyes and said, I have no clue. I'm just, we are going for a trip. So finally the elevator slows down as it apparently approaches some kind of a loading or an area, like a like a port. I open the door and there's Jesus Christ standing right in front of me. First I thought it was Peter. He said, no, it's not. I said, he said, your mom, my mom wants to talk to you. I said, Mother God wants to talk to me. She's coming, all I'm in. So, Mother God comes out, she gives me a hug, says, congratulations, you found the secret, you found the secret to ending the, visiting the other side without basically having to die, other than going to sleep at night. I said, okay, I got something for you. Now, at this point, I didn't realize Lomi wasn't there, I actually had no idea what was going on. I felt like totally weird. And she says, you can open this package now or you can open it later, but if you open it now, you may not quite understand the meaning until you go to the toilet. Oh, okay, fine. So I opened it up and there inside was a, a, um, a golden tampon. Literally, a golden tampon. I'm like, what? She said, you'll understand later on. Read the instructions when you can. It was actually a set of instructions in the box. So I put the box aside. And um, and she says, um, everything that has ever been wrong has been made right. I said, what? And the fame said, and it was she said, Michelle, literally, everything that was wrong has been made right. I think she was referring to my health. She says, now, um, are you ready to go back home? I said, yeah, but which button do I got to press? She, and then she explained that there's two sets of buttons on the control deck. You want to press one. Ah, oh, I didn't think of one. So I press one, and of course we descended to Earth. And I figured out how to get out of the building. And I caught up with R11 and the country port. And I felt like there's someone missing. She said, where's Lumi? Well, where's Lumi? It turns out that we separated, of course, that Lumi basically lost her ability to speak English. 
So she was freaking out and jabbering in, in Finnish, trying to figure out where in the heck she was, where I was. I was starting to panic too because I was so used to having Lummy by my side. I said, we got to find Lummy. I said, almost in hysterics. And so I said, the first thing we're going to do is figure out what was the last time I saw was she was in the elevator with me. And then somehow, when I, I told him about the, the landing to Jay, I said, then she temporarily um, left me and I didn't even think about it. You know, so, but I suspected she was still in the elevator, but she was. Okay, she said she basically was cold. She was sitting in the far back. She was like totally unsure what was going on because after being up to, until they rolled Jay, she got separated from me physically, so she lost the ability to understand what was going on. So, one of the things that Mother God had given me was a briefcase. And inside that briefcase, as she told me, was a, everything I needed, all the documents for Lumi, everything, all of her paperwork, her green cards, birth certificate, everything. So, so she said, don't worry, everything you need is in this box, in this briefcase. So I went ahead, and of course, not surprisingly, Lumi was basically was picked up by security of the bank. And and I came in and I said to her and finished. I said hello, Lumi. And she said, "My God," she said, "I'm so glad to see you." They're claiming I'm an illegal alien and they want to send me. They want to send ICE after me to deport me back to Helsinki. I said, "You don't have to worry about that." I showed the security agent her paperwork, her green card, everything. And of course, the ICE just came in, so I showed the ICE agent the same thing. I said, well, everything's in order, there's nothing wrong, because he checked with his supervisor on the phone. Um, he said, um, it seems to me that, you know, um, well, she's so clear to go, so you can go. So I, me and Lumi left, and then private, in front of everybody else, Lumi kissed me. And of course, Lomi and I basically realized when he kissed me that we merged back together again. And it was just really cool. Our women saw that. Grinch Report saw that. And then of course, Mother God gave me said when we were walking by a, um, by a small store, she said, Hey, uh, I wanted to explain one more thing. And I said, What's that? You and Lomi can separate anytime you want. Or you can even look like the Brittany and Abigail Hensel, and then she can stick her, in, her head out of your neck. I went, what? All of a sudden, they have my shirt rip, and let me stick her head out, you know, like this? I'm like, oh, did you have to ruin my clothes? I really, I'm sorry, I just wanted, this is such a cool idea that we can all be, you can also fully separate, too. Okay. That was kind of cool. But it was it was the situation. And I said, "Now, why? What is this?" I lost myself in the toilet. I saw what I got down there, which is really interesting. But I said, "Mom, what exactly am I supposed to do with this golden tampon?" Did you read the instructions? I read the instructions, but it says that it'll make everything right. And what does that mean? She says it means that you insert that. And all of a sudden, your whole timeline changes. My timeline changes. What do you mean changes? Well, from from the time when you were diagnosed until well, way back when you were a child up until now, everything will change. You will never know any of the people you know now. You will be able to have a family. You'll be able to have a husband. You'll be able to have everything. You'll be eternally happy. And I said, well, gee, that's nice, Mom, but I've gotten so used to the people that I know around me. Our 11H30, Cringe Report, Lumi. She said, yeah, you would lose Lumi, too. You wouldn't be a Snow Queen, either. I said, no. No, I don't want to lose my friends. That's, that would suck. I, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not going to use this. So I handed it back to her. She said, no, hold on to it, just in case you ever change your mind. I said, no, Mom, I know I'm not going to change my mind. I'm, I'm not going to lose the people that I know and care about for an ability to do a start over. 
or mulligan as they would say in ice skating. I just don't want to do that. So, obviously, I woke up, and of course, the point here was is not only did the fame got something out of it, too, um, and one of the things fame got out of it in the dream was the ability to speak, but he also was made, he, he healed, his ear was healed, and he um, was given a chance to finally be, grow up to be a tomcat, but he chose not to, to keep that gift. He didn't really think it was appropriate for a cat that was 17 years, 18 years old, so he didn't keep that. But um, it was just a really strange dream. Um, but here's the thing I think made it more in, incredibly interesting, was the dream I was trying to say is because I could feel the elevator controls and I could smell the elevator and I could smell the office interior and I could sense it. Is it a dream or was it an actual astral travel experience? I think it was an astral travel experience to another dimensional plane. Maybe it's an important message in there. I don't know. But I thought I would share it with you. As we get ready to enter into 2019 and the first actual work day of 2019. And don't forget tonight we have our live stream. And I really hope that you'll think about the story. Maybe it means something to you. Maybe there's a reason that I needed to feel I had to tell it to you. But one thing is clearly obvious is that there was a sense of hope. A sense that things are going to be better this year. If you keep looking up, and if you keep looking towards divine the faith of Mother and Father God, you will be fine. Despite the article by a editorial piece at Infowars saying that the Earth, um, Earth America is going to hell, which is, it's going to hell. But I didn't see that opinion editorial piece until after I had my dream, astral travel, when I was sleeping, and I really felt it was important to watch. It was a happy dream, and that's something that we should be looking forward to. All right, guys, so I'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, midnight UK, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Brett, um, Seth Stewart, he's going to try to be on the show tonight. People Peace is probably going to be on the show tonight, too. It's going to be interesting to see what happens if we get the two, the two teenagers together. I really would like to see what happens. All right. Talk to Teleport about what's going on and the concerns. And he said that those are not his people being egged on by him to do this action. Because he said to me, I have no problem with you. He said, because you always treated me nice. Of course, Country Porter and him have some bad blood, which has nothing to do with me. I basically told Country Port basically to to take it elsewhere um, between them because it's really not appropriate to, to argue on my channel that much. I really don't like flame wars. I don't. All right, guys. But for now, I want to thank you. By the way, I'm sorry this phone flips the screen sideways like this. I don't know why this phone does, but oh well. That's not my problem. So for now, thank you very much for watching this. Stay out of trouble. Bye-bye.